India has many landscapes, some seen and many unseen. This is the story of Bunni and its unseen wonder. Bunni Grasslands is 3,000 square kilometers of prime grassland habitat found in the Kutch region of Gujarat. While this region is well known for its rich wildlife, there is one story in Bunni that's not well explored. The colorful artisans of Gujarat have walked this landscape for hundreds of years and have an intimate knowledge of the land and her secrets. There is one enigma from Bunni that has been a local favorite for ages. It's something that still has no reliable photo documentation or scientific explanation. This is the fiery landscape of Bunni. This is the story of the mysterious ghost flames or Charbatti. <laughs> Charbatti or ghost flames in the local Kachi language has been witnessed since early times and has captured people's imagination ever since. As a part of our Unseen Landscapes expedition, we at Landscape Wizards decided to explore the subject and investigate the claims behind this phenomenon. Was it an urban legend or a natural phenomenon that has never been properly documented? We wanted to find out. Researching on the topic pointed us to a questionable image on the internet that showed floating fireballs. A Wikipedia page on the topic describes it as an unexplained fireball that floats around on dark nights, sometimes glowing as bright as mercury lamps. With close to 3,000 square kilometers of open grassland to cover and having no reliable information regarding its origin or nature and devoid of any visual evidence, this was a subject that sounded impossible to film right from the start. Bunny is famous for its rich bird life. It's a paradise for birds and hosts many important bird species, both resident and transient. The European nightjar is a migratory nightjar that is found all across the continental Europe and migrates from Europe to winter in the sub-Saharan Africa. Its usual winter migration route takes it through Europe and Asia before ending in Africa where it roos for the winter. Despite its long route over Asia, there has been only two confirmed sightings of this nocturnal bird in India. While there has been numerous sightings of this winter visitor from the neighboring country of Pakistan, this is the first ever video documentation of this bird from the Indian soil. Bunni is also home to one of the biggest congregation of cranes and flamingos in the country that congregate on shores of Charidan, the biggest water body in the area. Hunting for the Chaubati was not easy. According to the little literature available, this is caused by the oxidation of gases phosphine, diphosphane and methane. These gases are produced by the organic decay of the prehistoric vegetation trapped underneath the soil. These gases spontaneously ignite on contact with oxygen in air to create the epimeral fires. However, there is no scientific reasoning to explain when and where the flames may appear. Talking to the locals on their previous sightings, 
confirmed on the unpredictability of the phenomenon. We had to be at the right place at the right time. Jugal Tiwari from Sedo has witnessed these flames multiple times over the years while looking for birds in the region. So my one very exciting, you know, experience with the Charbati was on 5th of November 2005 when I was with my family members, we were out to watch birds. One very interesting thing is like when you go out to see, okay, this evening we are going to see Charbati or we try, things are not like certain that you will be able to see. But when you live here as a villager or a part of the land a landscape, one of the creatures living in this, and you never know, you may be surprised to see that. So on the 5th November 2005, we were just out to watch birds and we were coming out of Bani near the, at the base of Kiro, we saw a light which was like a glowing coal from ground. So we were very you know, curious that well, what is this light in the middle of nowhere. So we went to check and that light slowly lifted from the ground and then split it into two and the light started following. And it was almost 30 minutes that light followed us and from two there were eight to nine lights surrounding our vehicle and in my family member, were, my son was there, there were two young kids, my relative and uh, some elderly people. So they all, you know, got excited, some frightened, some, so it was a mixed feeling. But that was a very, you know, interesting experience. The modus operandi of the team involved working well into the dark nights, looking for any unexplained light sources and verifying its origin. This was easier said than done, as we had to deal with multiple electric lights of the villages visible over the distant horizon. It was up to the seasoned eyes of Jugal to help us verify any questionable light sources. We also had to deal with all the nocturnal critters and crawlers to ensure we did not end up on the receiving side of stings and bites. When a Maasai, out in the open, under the cover of darkness, lit by thousands of stars, it was a sight worth all the effort, even without the elusive ghost flames. Of all the natural light sources in Banni, the most impressive is the full moon. The Yaksh temple in the town of Nakatrana near Banni holds a curious story. Every year, the Mota Yaksh Mela hosts the largest gathering of people in Kutch, is celebrated for a few nights in September during the full moon. The locals congregate at the base of the temple to celebrate the beautiful full moon. Nobody really knows why this Mela is celebrated and everybody has an opinion. A local legend has it that the gathering celebrates the hundred Yakshas or angels who came down from heaven guided by the moon to help the people of this region during their darkest times dispelling their fears. Their fiery spirits are believed to float around guiding people who are lost in the vast darkness of the Bunny landscape, taking them home. One of the most prominent landmarks in Bunny is Kiro Hill, a prehistoric volcano that has gone quiet over the millennia. The current day Kutch is a world very different from the olden times. The colorful rock formations found around this region show a world when it was young and restless. The petrified magma found here paint a world of great geological activity punctuated by volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. It is visible from across the entire region and the Kiro 
stands out in an otherwise flat and featureless land as a true beacon providing people with a sense of direction speaking to the locals we realized that most eyewitness accounts of charbatti have happened around the base of kiro en route towards the chari dand lake local herders traveling along its base have often spotted the charbatti floating around the plains often mistaking the lights for other campfires or vehicle lights what was the reason that charbatti occurred mostly around kiro is this phenomenon somehow related to the subterranean gases trapped under the now extinct volcano is there some activity still inside the volcano that we are supposed to be aware of the team spent several nights traversing the plains between kiro and chari dan hunting for the elusive flames while driving around the plains in darkness there were multiple moments when the team was confronted with the sudden appearance of lights across the horizon however these were false alarms and usually had a man-made explanation behind them there was this one time that the team did come across an unexplained light speck across the distant horizon and it vanished as quickly and effortlessly as it had appeared had the team just seen a fireball could this actually be the first ever image of the charbatti maybe bunny doesn't like giving away its mystery that easy maybe we need to dedicate more time and energy trying to understand this phenomenon are the flames really out there will we have anyone lucky enough to capture these unseen landscape on camera will we ever glimpse into yet another tantalizing hidden wonder of the natural world only time will tell